Right, so Felicity, um, yeah. you're, you're next. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's great to have you today as well. And uh, so I think you'll be sharing um, so the work of, uh, that you've done, uh, so your agency and us, and the work that you've done with the British Red Cross and onboarding uh, volunteers um, to do some work. So yeah, over to you. Great, thank you so much. Um, yeah, so hi everyone, I'm Felicity. I'm a product strategist at Andas. And on the call today, um, we also have Oscar, who is one of our experienced designers. And we're gonna be doing the talk together. Um, so yeah, we, we are from Andas. We're a boutique innovation consultancy and we're a bunch of designers, strategists and coaches. And we work with a whole range of different clients to kind of solve their, their biggest and their most meaty challenges. Um, just go to the next slide. So alongside our client work, we love to do our own internal projects and we refer to them as the fireworks. And they're these big, stretchy, ambitious projects that let us do the kind of work that we love to do um, and build internal teams and teach us all new skills uh, at the same time. So at the height of the pandemic, we launched Making for Good, which was our very first design firework. Uh, and it was an internal initiative aimed to lend our design skills and our strategy skills to charities, social enterprises, and other non-for-profits. So in December, we launched a campaign on LinkedIn to search for organizations that needed our help. Um, and that is how we came to work with the British Red Cross. Uh, next slide, please. So why did we choose the British Red Cross? At the point of launch in December, the second wave of COVID was really ramping up across the country and there were so many organizations in need. Um, what the British Red Cross needed help with was to uh, kind of tackle the biggest challenge they'd ever faced as a charity, which was to help with the max vaccin vaccination rollout across the country. And we really believed that by contributing to this effort um, to ending the pandemic, we'd be indirectly be helping so many other charities who were struggling to kind of uh, see the light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, next slide, please. So what was their challenge? The British Red Cross had to recruit, train and deploy a thousand volunteers to St John's Ambulance. And to me, that doesn't sound like too much, but that target is so much higher than, than what they're used to, particularly combined with the tight timelines they were under as well. Um, and within that, they had other challenges. So they had to make sure that the applicants understood the commitment they were entering into. They needed a task force who were gonna see this through um, and not drop out. And they needed to make sure that the applicants themselves were suitable. Um, if they received too many unsuitable applications, their recruitment teams were just swamped. Um, so it was kind of a, a fine balance, really. Yeah, so the, so the focus of our project was on the recruitment of volunteers. So the part where they sign up and the current solution they had in place initially was referred to as this triage form, which was a very lengthy and direct sign up form. Um, so for the volunteers within BRC's reserves or people who had volunteered before, this solution was good enough as it sort of set expectations and was very clear on the necessary requirements. However, with such punchy deadlines, BRC couldn't rely on their existing volunteer base. They needed more boots on the ground and fast. So they decided to look for external volunteers, which are sort of general members of public who never volunteered before. Uh, next slide, please. Um, but what about these external volunteers? Um, this presented a whole new challenge as external volunteers had no loyalty or trust to the British Red Cross. Uh, at this point of the pandemic, people had lots of emotional labor at home, work, in personal lives, et cetera. Uh, and in addition, so many organizations were desperate for help. Um, the experience needed to go beyond a basic form. Um, next slide, please. So how did we start? Next slide, please. So yeah, this uh, this was a unique challenge for us. Um, and in terms of getting started, what we did was we flipped the project on its head and we started by writing a case study. Um, we felt like we really needed to document the magnitude of the challenge and the problem and to zoom out and take a moment just to take stock of the enormity of the vaccination effort and what was being asked, not only of the British Red Cross, but of volunteers. So we asked ourselves, what would we want to say about the work in five years time? 
and what will make our delivery and our approach unique and valuable. And our output of this was a kind of quite punchy vision and a case study that we were able to revisit throughout the course of the project and make sure that we were, that we were achieving everything that we were um, aiming for. Next slide, please. So despite only having two weeks to get this together, um, we really recognize the importance of doing an in-depth discovery process. And with so much going on in the world, we had to make sure we were thinking very carefully about the nuance of the context, um, people's emotional states and so on. So we spent a lot of time thinking about personas, tone of voice and asking all of these big questions that would later inform our design decisions. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and as part of that, we also reframed the brief. So the brief we were given by the British Red Cross was quite simply to help them recruit a thousand volunteers. What we really wanted to do was to bring the user into the center of this experience and give ourselves a brief that felt more human um, and more aligned to what we were actually asking of people. So, you know, it's out of their comfort zone. It has no tangible reward and so on. So yeah, for the for the two week sprint, we dedicated the first week to this big picture thinking. Um, so we didn't touch design work, which for me was terrifying. But um, we just asked those big scary questions. Um, uh, we'll be very honest about the all familiar, too familiar feeling of that Monday morning of week two, uh, where we had five days until handover and no designs, just sort of hunches, hypothesis, plans, and a whole lot of post it notes. Um, it felt scary and slightly out of control, but as a team and as business, we're getting better at learning to love this feeling of chaos. Um, next slide, please. So just defining the job of the thing, um, stepping into week two, we revisited the triage form, consolidated our learnings and defined what this step in the process actually needed to do for volunteers, not for the British Red Cross. Um, so these were the four pillars that became our guiding principles when it came to designing the solution. And that was to inspire, to guide, to reassure and to educate. Next slide, please. Um, now we were in the thick of it. Um, in broad brushstrokes, we structured the journey, thinking about the mediums, language, imagery, layout, all with the volunteers' needs in mind and consistently re revisiting those four pillars. We worked in, in open, sharing our work little and often, um, giving feedback, putting stuff in front of our colleagues, building momentum together with the team at BRC. Um, next slide, please. And so for our sort of final solution was a microsite where the user would, or the volunteers would land following their initial communications about the opportunity. Um, so we aim to create something informative and empowering, all revolving around those four design pillars. So the landing page sort of aimed to inspire. We use sort of uplifting imagery and testimonials to invite the volunteers onto the microsite. Next page, please. Um, as you were to scroll, scroll down through the page, we helped to set expectations. We, we informed the volunteers with a brief description of the role, the commitment in hours, and a place to find out more information. Next slide, please. Um, further down the page, we helped to guide the volunteers and hold the volunteers' hands. Um, we showed the end-to-end -end journey for the volunteers from the application process to the training that they'd have to complete before being some deployed to St. John's. Uh, next slide, please. And finally, we offered safety and support. Um, we made it very clear which numbers to call, what emails to use if volunteers had any questions or queries regarding safety. Um, and the, the, the team at the Red Cross were thrilled with the output and recognized the value and the expertise in our approach. Um, the going big for going small and sort of the chaos into order. Um, next slide, please. Great, so um, what did we learn? So the first one is to trust the process. When we started week two, it's very easy to think, oh God, you know, we haven't done any designs. We haven't actually started the work. Um, but actually, you know, the process is the work. What we'd done in week one was every bit as valuable as, as going to sketch and starting to do those designs. It's the hypotheses, it's the hunches, it's the discovery that help you build something that's great. Um, secondly, more than just a handover. So, so much of the work that we did with the teams at the British Red Cross was really helping to shape their internal processes and the ways of working. We brought in design, print, uh, design thinking principles. We introduced them to new tools, new cadences. Um, and while we were there, we started to hear them talk about 
uh, other volunteer experiences where they could start to apply the things they'd learned. And we really felt like we'd made a lasting impact beyond just hand, handing them over the designs. And thirdly, um, embracing the uncomfortable. We'd never done this before. This was the first time we'd launched Making for Good. It was our first time doing pro bono work. Um, and, you know, we, we really learned to embrace that and love trying to navigate it together and, and really teaming through it. And next slide, please. So what would our advice be um, if you were doing something similar? Uh, like so many charities, the British Red Cross is a complex organization. It's big. There are sprawling teams, um, so many stakeholders, so many board members and so on. And it could have been really easy for us to procrastinate um, and get, get kind of caught in the detail. But instead, we just jumped straight in. Um, we took time to get to know our stakeholders. We introduced them to new tools. We took time to have one-on-one -on -one sessions with the team there um, and helping them with planning and all sorts of things. So our advice really would just be start by starting, get stuck in, get your hands dirty and build that trust from day one um, really build that cohesive team. And yeah, you, you'll do great work. Brilliant. And then, yeah, something that still puzzles us. We, I mean, we'd love to, to know how some of you have show the value of, of UX to charities and other not-for-profit um, non-for-profit organizations as well. Um, so that's sort of our big puzzling question at the end. Thank you. 